and then they'd also been out on assignment. So they would have been exhausted and so he's here trying to teach them this principle of, of um, solitude and slowing down and reflecting and regathering your energy. And I think too, he himself, like you said earlier, he was probably grappling with grief as well as um, the busy. And so he himself probably went, you know what, I need some time out. But what I find fascinating is like if we were to consider like this cup, we often think that we only love when the cup's full. Mm. So their, their cup would have been empty, their energy levels would have been down here. And in our culture, we would say, well, until my, my cup's full again, I can't pour out. But he stopped for mm. the people. He still recognised that he needed to connect with the people. Um, and in, so he stopped for the people. He met their needs. He healed. He taught. He fed. He did all of that. And then what I find fascinating in that story is he kind of said to the disciples, right, you guys, you need to go back to your time of solitude now. You go off like we'd planned um, and I'll finish cleaning up here. So as a leader, he finished cleaning up. He got his team back on track so they could have solitude. Um, and then as soon as he'd finished connecting and finished with the, with the people, he then went into solitude himself. So we see this amazing, I don't know, this just amazing picture of somebody who understood that you get f fueled or energised um, by time alone, but you also get fueled and energised by being with people, that loving is both having time um, to refuel, you know, you love yourself by doing that. You you love those in your closest mm. team when you slow them down. But you also can love um, humanity in a big scale by connecting with them. And it's not really where your tank is. It's it's just making that decision that you're going to connect. <laughs>